Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are and wherever you're joining us from. In this, Aero and CNS are proud to host the side event on climate change and its effect on sexual and reproductive health and rights. We find that this is a timely session to do together because in these last two years, the world has been thrown into disarray by the COVID-19 pandemic. But simultaneously, slowly, in the background, the effect of climate change on our world has also been unfolding. In these last few years, we have witnessed intense rainfall and ensuing devastating floods across several countries, crippling our systems, causing loss of life, livelihoods and assets, especially amongst the poorer people who are forced to live in these flood-prone areas. On the other hand, intense heat has also led to droughts and will eventually lead to crop failure. Yet despite having lived through COVID-19, governments seem still reluctant to make the systemic and institutional shifts required for us to ameliorate the effects of climate change or help communities to be resilient in the face of climate change. How does climate change affect SRHR, you may ask? More importantly, what learnings do we have from SRHR which we can extend to the HIV AIDS community? Disruption of health services and deprioritization of sexual and reproductive health services means that health becomes inaccessible and HIV services such as testing, counseling, access to ARVs, referrals also become disrupted for all living in these flood affected areas. Whether the adaptive measure at community level is walking further for food, water and fuel, girls and boys face increased risk of violence, of which not only pregnancies but STIs such as HIV AIDS increase during this time. Communities affected by floods and drought often have to migrate across boundaries, borders, which often see increase in unsafe sex practices due to inaccessibility of commodities, as well as inability to negotiate sexual boundaries. Moreover, climate change exacerbates the inequities felt by already marginalized communities, such as sex workers, MSM, and transgender persons amongst these. Data shows that during the COVID crisis, most of these groups were not able to access the social security measures offered by governments as they did not fit the required categories. Arrow's own work on the interlinkages of food security with SRHR showed how LBTI persons especially were vulnerable to food insecurity as they faced persecution and eviction from their own families and communities. The excommunication from community at a young age entails a long period of life being food insecure and malnourished and hungry. Hence, we as empowered and privileged advocates who occupy space need to be able to hold governments accountable to the promises they have made to us on climate change. All of the communities we hold dear to us, young people, women, non-binary persons, LGBTI, these communities will suffer most the effects of climate change and we owe it to them to ensure that we speak as one global community on this issue. All of us will be affected by climate change. This is the reason Arrow and Partners worked on the Arrows for Change edition on climate justice in planet A. And we feel that it's very timely and strategic to work with CNS in order to pro provide the Hindi translation of this edition. We hope that this work is useful to all of us to guide us on our future advocacy on this issue. Thank you.